Good afternoon. If I could ask everyone to please uh, take their seats. We're now going to start our panel on um, social media. Um, I'm Jennifer Schenker, uh, founder and co-editor-in-chief of Informilo, uh, a European-focused website and print magazine um, that connects business with innovation. And I'm very happy to be here this afternoon with three um, experts on social media. To my immediate right, um, Gina Toast, who many of you uh, may know. Um, she is a prominent uh, journalist, um, blogger, social media expert here in Spain. Uh, next to her, um, I have um, a Yelat Naf from Israel, um, the founder of Blonde 2.0, um, that has been helping brands leverage social media all the way back since 2006. And uh, last but certainly not least, we have Sergio Cortez, um, who specializes in helping companies um, uh, cap uh, earn revenue from uh, leveraging social media. So uh, we're, we're here to talk a little bit about um, the speech we just heard from Mark Zuckerberg and, um, and what that says about where social media uh, is heading. Uh, I, I was struck by the fact that, um, you know, here is this company that um, has not been around all that long compared to all of these global mobile operators uh, coming here to Barcelona and telling them how they're going to, how to connect the rest of the world. Um, the fact that so many people in the world are still not connected today um, is proof that probably the traditional models don't work. But it also struck me um, as incredible that um, connecting to Facebook is now being considered a basic service and even almost like a basic human right. And wow, I mean, like food, water, Facebook, food, water, <laughs> Facebook. yes. But, but even Facebook with all of its power and all of its users, right? Um, is having to make major adjustments to um, come to grips with the fact that everything's going mobile. And so we're seeing the rise of mobile social messaging and um, the purchase of WhatsApp for 19 billion is, and which was followed very shortly from the purchase of Viber um, by uh, Japan's Rakuten is really evidence um, that um, Social, social messaging is, is taking on a very, very important role. So um, maybe I'll start with you um, uh, and, and ask you, because I know Viber is one of your clients, um, you know, how you've seen um, the rise of um, social messaging and, and why it's so important for, um, for players like Facebook, a Rakuten, to, to, and, uh, to pay the kind of prices they're paying um, and, and bring those services in-house. Okay. So, yeah, as Jennifer mentioned, I have been uh, doing Viber's PR since day one. Um, and together we um, brought them to over 300 million users uh, worldwide. I think that for Facebook specifically, um, it was very important to, to purchase WhatsApp um, because, um, you know, and, and if we talk specifically about, you know, why messaging apps uh, are on the rise, is because, first of all, the younger generation is not really on Facebook. If you ask kids who are, you know, 10 or 12 uh, where they're hanging out, it's really not Facebook because their parents are on Facebook and they don't want to be on Facebook. So they use messaging apps like Viber or like WhatsApp. Um, so that's one reason, you know, I think that, that Mark, um, uh, it was important for Mark and Facebook to purchase WhatsApp. Um, another important reason that I think that the, the whole, you know, that the purchase happened is um, that Facebook is looking to expand to other territories and, um, 
companies like Viber or like WhatsApp are used worldwide and uh, Facebook is looking um, to expand the, uh, you know, the base of its user base. Um, other reasons are because I think that, you know, you know Facebook is, is currently uh, feeling like it's not, it, it needs to have a more dominant role in the mobile space and um, it's worried about being disrupted in the mobile space. Um, and therefore, uh, you know, one of the reasons that they, they look to all these messaging apps is because that's where the kids are, that's where the young generation is. And um, this, this whole idea of instant messaging, of things that are not stored, of, you know, that's where the kids are at right now. They're worried about their parents looking at um, their messages. Um, they're worried about, you know, um, their parents seeing what they're doing. And I think that that's one of the main reasons why all these apps are usually successful. So, so what, um, and, and, and this question is for really any, any of the panelists, what does WhatsApp have that Messenger lacked? Sergio, do you want to take a oh, crack at that? Actually, I, I think nothing. I mean, um, most of the features that you can have in, in WhatsApp, you can really find them on Facebook Messenger, for example. In my opinion, this, this, um, this uh, what we have seen these weeks, is not uh, like, a, it's a defensive strategy. I mean, they are trying to, to deliver more services, more apps, and to connect more people and more people. And I think they have bought WhatsApp mainly because of that. It's not because they are just uh, expecting for new features or what people is going to do with WhatsApp instead of doing it with Facebook messages. But uh, of, of course, I think they are trying to, to deliver more services to their customers. And I'm quite excited um, for the things we have seen today in this conference because I think Mark has uh, presented us a Facebook like, uh, for example, internet access provider in the future. Um, delivering more connections and trying to answer one of the questions that I think we all have in, in this market, that is how Facebook is going to challenge more users and th this one billion users, two billion users. And I think uh, if I were Google, for example, I, I would be, tonight I, I wouldn't uh, sleep quite well in this sense because I think he has presented Facebook like the main gate to the internet through the mobile devices in the future. So I think this is a, a quite interesting issue that we have seen today. Do you think that Facebook could become the world's largest mobile operator? Uh, more than maybe a um, mobile operator, I think he's going to be like the main service provider in the mobile internet. I think uh, he has said that Facebook is mainly a, a, a basic service uh, to access to the internet. So here we can find some interesting issues uh, as well. For example, for the, for the Facebook developers community, where, uh, who, we were quite uh, worried about that. No? How are they going to deal with this Facebook community? No? So with this kind of uh, model or with this uh, strategy, I think uh, it's an uh, open door for, for these kind of uh, parties. I think that we have to look at the other side because uh, what WhatsApp has, Facebook has to lose it. I mean, people trust WhatsApp, and people is starting not to trust Facebook. Not just because your parents are on Facebook and you don't trust them, as you mean, um, you can upload a photo and your mom can say, you know, <laughs> something about it. It's about you send a lot of information through uh, messaging apps, such Snapchat. We, can, we have seen sexting in Snapchat, uh, hacking through the servers of Snapchat or lots of messaging apps and getting all the information. Uh, Mark said it's not about having this information because WhatsApp isn't storaging anything, but they have the power of trustful, who is, is very important to have it because you can buy it. Is people trust you or they don't trust you? And they have an amount of a database that can be converted into a social network if they want it, like Line did with, with the games and the points and everything that they have. Well, 
There's some talk that, you know, down the line, Facebook may choose to turn WhatsApp into a platform um, of e-commerce and advertising. So how do you think users will feel about that? Will they accept it? Um, Jan, Jan Kuhn, the WhatsApp founder, said that um, they are not going to pervert the platform. They are going to maintain their philosophy uh, with no games, no ads. They're going to explore other, other environments, but not that. I trust him. I mean, for a long time, he ha had a lot of other apps full of images uh, like line uh, with the stickers and games and with uh, voice chats. Um, and, and he has treated WhatsApp like a serious platform. And maybe because I'm from Spain and here everybody uses uh, WhatsApp, but when Line appeared, uh, everybody started to use Line until they forgot it and started using WhatsApp again. And the same with um, um, Telegram. So I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, I, I guess what I'm, I'm getting at is, you know, People start out offering things for free. Then it's like, okay, then you pay a dollar after a year. And then they, they come under pressure from shareholders and they have to find ways to monetize. And um, uh, it, it can change the nature of the service. It can change the, the nature of the relationship with the user. Um, and so, so as, as social media matures, there will be more pressure for them to earn more money and commercialize, and, and there's trade-offs on that. I mean, there's already a uh, backlash from um, parents who are unhappy that their children's pictures suddenly show up as, you know, they've liked something on Facebook and then their picture shows up next to an advertisement. That's, the children don't really maybe understand that that's what they're signing up for. So, so this whole issue of trust that you brought up, I think is a really important one. And I think it hasn't been completely defined yet. We're still in this kind of murky area where the, the companies are testing things out and, and, and to see how far they can push the envelope. Um, you, can, you can buy a, a, a smartphone here if you don't have WhatsApp in your platform. So I think it's a very important um, application. I just, yeah, I just wanted to say that I think that Facebook, um, first of all, as far as uh, the comparison to Messenger, um, obviously people are being more active on uh, WhatsApp. I mean, the, the activity level of WhatsApp is, is uh, phenomenal. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons that, that uh, Facebook was so uh, keen on buying it. Um, so yeah, I think I, think, um, I read that um, the, the engagement they were spending 70%, you yeah, know, as opposed to, which was, which was more than, uh, than people spend on, right. on Facebook Messenger, so. Uh, and also another important point, which I was reading on the web this, um, after the acquisition, is that um, there are 500 million photos uh, being shared through WhatsApp uh, every single day, which, you know, if you think about it, I mean, Facebook is the largest uh, uh, photo directory in the world, and they obviously, you know, they want to own that. They want to own that space. And so um, I think that was another important reason uh, why they purchased it. So beyond sort of consumers, what does this mean for brands and business users? The shift away from just, say, um, using Facebook to um, these social messaging services and, and um, what, what are the implications for brands? What, what do you advise them to do um, in terms of, you know, where they spend their time and their money? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, going back to what you were saying, that you believe, Jan, about the advertising. You know, Facebook started as a free platform, and at the end of the day, you know, right now it's very, very, very difficult for brands right now to market themselves in any way unless they spend some money on advertising because Facebook has limited the reach of business pages to such a small amount that unless you spend, you know, at least a few thousand dollars a month, 
um, you're not going to be able to grow your community. And so, you know, usually, I mean, back in the day, I needed to explain to people why they needed to use Facebook uh, in order to, you know, create their brand awareness. Uh, today, uh, I actually uh, send them elsewhere. I send them to Pinterest, I send them to Twitter, because I think that those platforms uh, enable brands to, you know, to, to speak freely and brand freely, and um, Facebook has become this, um, it just because of the pressure that you mentioned before, you know, they have this pressure. I understand it. It's, it's um, understandable, but still, for brands today, it's very difficult to market on Facebook. So, Joe, do you want to comment? Yeah, I'm absolutely agree with her. Um, in, in, uh, from the point of view, for, for example, from the traditional social media, uh, understanding, for example, channels uh, to have relationships with their customers and all that stuff. No? For example, from our point of view in socialbuy.com, where we work every day, uh, we are trying to know better the customers for our customers. I mean, for example, uh, let's say that every time, for example, uh, one user connects through his Facebook Connect into an e-commerce platform, for example, he's delivering over 75,000 data points to the retailer, for example. No? So there's a huge uh, challenge here for the companies to know better this customer through this data and delivering, for example, uh, personalized experiences or loyalty actions or a lot of things. No? So from this point of view, uh, for example, I think WhatsApp is going to add a lot of interesting information to that, what we call social graph. Um, that, in my opinion, is the, 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 key, um, the key stone for, for make profitable an user for a customer. Um, you said earlier that you felt that um, the the purchase of WhatsApp was defensive. Um, you know, Facebook also made one could argue a defensive move in um, buying um, Instagram as well, and it tried and failed to buy Snapchat. What what do you think it has still has to do in order to you know ensure it's 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 um, its position. Um, obviously, the, uh, it's pretty audacious to kind of center themselves as the on-ramp to the internet and, and, and argue that it, Facebook is a basic service, but um, do you feel like there are other competitive threats out there that they have to worry about? Google, in general, because Google is um, trying to take over other services, like Months ago, they bought Waze. They were on stage earlier. And it's about maps. So why Google want a map company? And maybe they, they're trying to get us through lots of spaces in our lives. And messaging is one of them. Maybe uh, Google has uh, Hangouts. Now it's not working properly, but it will. I, <laughs> I have faith in it, but um, I think it's what they have to fear. I don't know if you want to ask I, something. I think that um, you know the internet and, and the industry that we're in is constantly evolving, so they constantly have to be on the lookout for the next big thing. It's not like, okay, now they have a dominant position and that's it. They need to constantly do that all the time. Um, and, um, you know, it's a challenge, obviously, but they've been pretty good about keeping their dominant position so far. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, uh, certainly it's going to be Internet of the Things, the, the next big thing for them. Uh, and in, in, at this point, I would love to see, for example, uh, some concepts that Facebook has already launched before, like Facebook Home, for example, how they are going to deal with this uh, new Internet of the Things and, and compete, for example, uh, with Google Glasses and, and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that may we maybe have to ask at something that we think that Facebook is for free and WhatsApp, is, we, ha we have to pay like 89 euros per year, but or if you have Android, but um, I think that nothing on the internet is for free. We pay not with money, but we pay with our data. So when they say how they are going to get 90 million, a billion dollars 
with that little money every year of each user. It's not about that money. It's about all the information, but not about WhatsApp. It's about Gmail. We are using our mm, mail uh, for free. No, we are using because when you are talking with your friends about a tra uh, travel to Finland, I don't know how. There are Finland companies announcing. So, and someone is reading my emails, of course. Okay, um, with that, I'm going to open uh, questions to the floor. Um, does anybody have any questions about um, where social media is going for our panelists? So nobody cares where social media is going. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to add some thoughts to kind of wrap up? Um, yeah, I mean, I love Facebook. I don't. I don't want it to sound um, like I don't. I've always been a, ver a very big fan of Facebook, um, but I think they're under tremendous pressure uh, to make money, and they're. Um, becoming quite aggressive with all their uh, methods uh, recently. Um, but uh, I have to say that, that actually when they acquired WhatsApp, I was quite proud of them actually, because I thought it was a very big step. And I, I, uh, it, for me at least, it kind of put them on the map, because a lot of people were saying, okay, you know, Facebook is dying, Facebook is dead. People are very easily, um, you know, the, the, they easily bury stuff, you know, and uh, I think that uh, it was a good move for them, and I'm positive about the future of Facebook. Uh, but then again, let's not forget that we have other social networks out there um, that are very valuable, um, Twitter especially, and um, we should utilize, you know, we should open our horizons. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm very excited about what we have uh, listened today. Uh, um, because I, I think it's going to open a huge uh, war, a strategy work uh, between Google and Facebook in the future for dominate this uh, internet access in the mobile or smartphones. And, and I think this is going to need from Google maybe to make a new step uh, in order to, to compete through, through what we have here today. So in concluding, I think it's, it's really interesting. So maybe the next thing is we'll see Google buy Snapchat for, I don't know, $29 billion. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to wrap up with anything? What Mark said that WhatsApp was important with, because it was a portal to more services and more content, do you think that it's going to be like cross-promotion between uh, Facebook and WhatsApp, like integration? I don't know how to say it. Por uh, that WhatsApp was a portal to more content. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the sort of content that's on WhatsApp and, th and those is, is a different sort of content that's on Facebook. Because think about it, when you post stuff on Facebook, you post stuff when you're happy and you know, you, you, nice pictures of your family. You, don't, you usually don't post stuff that's very dark and ephemeral. Um, and so that, I think it opens up a whole new door to new sort of content that Facebook, you know, is, is, now, is now in control of. Absolutely. So I think the message then is watch this space. And yeah. um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how things have moved on by the time we come back next year. <laughs> um, with that, I'd like to thank um, the panelists um, for, if, please um, give them uh, uh, a hand.